And then, it was the 17th, the 18th January 1943, after about four months in Westerbork, this is what happens. The lights go on in all the barracks, and on the table is a man with a sheet of paper in his hands, and on the paper the names of the people that are going to be deported. So I'm laying there in bed listening, and I look around, you know, underneath my blanket, I see him get dressed, and that one gets dressed, all ready to go. When is it going to end? And then I hear Greenman, Leon, get up, get dressed, tomorrow morning, deportation. And the same thing happens in the barrack with my wife and my child. So I got dressed. I rushed to Dr. Neuberger's office. And I shows him, you get a, a strip of paper, deportation. He said, what? I don't understand, he says. And he talks to me, he says, your paper's are on the way, they're supposed to come. Anyhow, nothing helped. And half past eight we stood there. There were 750 people. Be exact is 748 people as registered in the books. But I'm naming it 750, easy reckoning. And I says to Els, my wife, look, Schlesinger is talking to Konrad Gemmeke, the SS commander from Westerbork. Now, as we walk towards it, we stop, you stop, and we stop next to Schlesinger. And you say this time, he, I said, he doesn't like me anymore, I've been troubling him. You tell him, we're English, we need not go, and our documents are on the way, they can arrive any minute. So we went, and we stopped the slicing, and she said that. And he gave us less than a second, and he said to Kunrad Gemmeke, das ist abgewiesen in Hage, die müssen weg. This has been refused in The Hague, they got to go. We go in The Hague, you had the headquarters, the SS. We went through the gates, into the train. This was still a passenger train. Later on, you get the cattle trucks. Mm. In the train we went. With the grandmother, she was still with you? Yeah. So we, we went into the train. The train left between half past ten, quarter to eleven. And half an hour later, you were in Germany. The train heavily guarded. That journey took 36 hours when it stopped. No food, no drink, not even for the babies. And we sat opposite one another. These were still compartments, four and opposite four. I sat opposite my wife. We didn't say much, but what, one of the things I remember I said, else, if I don't come back, I might be ill, we're going to a cold country, I don't know, but I'll tell you that now. If I don't come back, marry. But if you do marry, see that you get a good man for the child. So she said, and that goes for you as well. If I don't come back, you marry a woman who would be good for our child. So our mind was on our baby, nothing else. Anyhow, the train stopped. Quiet, we're half asleep, half dozing, and then a loud shouting. Aussteigen, schnell, schnell, alles lassen liggen, the rose, the rose. Woke up, sleep, what, what? Now I understood a little German. We had to get out, leave everything, lay, get out as soon as possible. So we got up, and we stood there outside the train. Waiting. And as I stood, I looked in front of me, I saw a heap of snow. And here and there, through the snow, I saw corners of suitcases. I said, Els, look at that. The snow gets into the suitcases. Everything will be spoiled, wet. What a waste. Now, I did not know then that the people that came before us left their suitcases there. They were no more. I didn't know that then. They were finished off with. And we had to leave our blankets. Maybe we can collect our 
blankets later on. A normal sort. And there we stood. And then we walked a little way up the platform all together. There were 750 of us. And then a SS sergeant separated the women to the right and the men stood where we stood. And they were stood waiting a few minutes. And all of a sudden one of the women started to cry and shout. And she walked away. She wanted to be with her husband amongst us. And halfway this SS had a club in his hand. He let the club come down on her head. The poor woman fell to the ground and he kicked in the tummy. The thing I'll never forget. Immediately he turned around to the men, put the club on our shoulders and counted 50 men. There must be several hundred. 50 men and we had to march away. Everything went so quick then that we had no thought about this woman. But the picture I'll never forget. And we marched. 20, 30 yards, we had to stop. The road is still there because I've been seven times to that same place. And I look to the right and I see a truck come along and the truck stops in front of us. And I can see a lot of women and children loaded. And in the middle stood my wife and child. Now I know that's my wife and child because I see the face. I call her name, she couldn't have heard me, she didn't make no movement, she'd heard me. Because the engine of the car was making a noise. But my wife had made clothes. Now from thick velvet curtains, red velvet curtains, the fashion in Holland at that time, she had cut them up and made two garments, halfway the body. And left the top into pointed heads, like Father Christmas, sticking up. One for her and one for the baby in the arm. And those two points were looking at me. And then it went. The truck went. And I never saw them again. 